My name is Sally Sutton, and I'd like to be able to say that I spent lockdown writing a book for you, but in fact it took a year or two longer. But I hope its story is more convincing. My name is John Butterworth, and I'd like to be able to say that I've helped Sally with the book. But I think the biggest surprise for me was just the scale of the number of people financing their own water supplies all over the world which probably exceeds one billion people. So this is the first book on self-supply. Um, but it's not just a compendium of data and references. It's very much based on the experiences of projects and baseline surveys and piloting of support to self-supply in a wide variety of countries and also the experiences of individual families and their stories. So it's a mixture of theory and practice at a global level, but also at a country level with uh, six case studies on particular countries. The focus after that is really on sub-Saharan Africa, not because it's where self-supply systems are the most numerous, but more because it's the area where people with less than a basic supply are most numerous. And the book shows that, that it's not just the province of the richest and best educated, but those of limited means and poor education are equally likely to invest. And that supply sharing is the norm and therefore is a key to spreading the benefits even more widely. And the performance of these water supplies is linked in the book to elements of customer satisfaction and are not looked at in isolation, but alongside community water supply as the commonest alternative. And it looks at how the two interact and complement rather than compete with each other. And this interaction links to how people think as groups and as individuals. And, and this uh, sort of looking at water psychology comes up at various points in the book and um, makes me wish that I'd read psychology, not hydrogeology originally. Um, and I, I feel that it's an essential element that is missing from trying to ensure greater sustainability of water supplies altogether. Both service delivery models need to improve performance and there is the potential for them to do this together. Which brings us to how self-supply can be supported. And this is explored with examples of the processes of establishing a new approach and the necessary interactions of government, non-government organisations and private sector, each of which has their own role to play but not necessarily the same role in different countries. And I'll pass over to John now for an explanation of the case studies. What we did in the second part of the book is bring together six case studies from different authors, really very diverse contexts, three from Africa and three from very different places, from Scotland, from Central and Eastern Europe, from Thailand. And it turns out that self-supply is important in all these places. In fact, in more or less all countries. And it doesn't have to be a poor or backward solution. Self-supply can be scaled and improved. And these stories show how that's happened. There were lots of insights there, insights about how progress can be made, and in some cases, why it's not been sustained. In conclusion, the book raises more questions than it answers, but it is a first attempt to raise some of the issues and collect together evidence of the importance of household-led options, especially in dispersed communities. It's not something to be frightened of or ignored, but needs much better understanding, more research and policy development to make best use of a massive potential asset, albeit one with challenges. But what service delivery model doesn't have those. Thank you to my guests, Dr. Sally Sutton of SWL Consultants and Dr. John Butterworth of IRC. 
Self-supply, filling the gaps in public water supply provision is available free to download or can be bought in soft or hardback from Practical Action Publishing from the 15th of February. If you want to find out more about self-supply, you can visit the RWSN website or join our specialist online discussion group on this topic. Thank you for listening.